<laughs> hey, data gods. Welcome back to Kratos BI. Today, I'm super excited to talk about something fresh out of Fabcon Europe, the updated deployment pipelines in Microsoft Fabric. If you're managing data projects at scale, this is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. Whether you're deploying models, reports, even full Fabric applications, these deployment pipelines are awesome. All right, so Microsoft has rolled out some slick new features in Fabric to really enhance your pipeline game. If you're already familiar with the traditional deployment pipelines in Power BI, this builds on that, but adds more versatility and control, especially across environments like dev, dev test, and production. All right, think of it as uh, giving your data projects a more structured life cycle, but now integrates deep, deeper into Microsoft Fabric. So now let's break it down step by step so you can get started. I'm following along with the get started and deployment pipelines that Microsoft has shared. So feel free to check out the site for more in-depth details. Link is down below, but for now, let's dive in. Okay, first things first, we're gonna be going in and we're gonna be creating our pipeline, okay? Uh, in fact, you know what? Why don't I just talk us through this, okay? So in order to create my pipeline, I'm gonna to go to my deployment pipelines tab over here. Let's zoom in. All right, so I'm gonna click on deployment pipelines. I'm gonna say new pipeline, all right? So this is my Kratos BI demo, demo. Click on next, okay? So that's gonna create this, create my first pipeline. Now this is the first structure I'm gonna be putting together. So I'm gonna be now gonna go in and configure my stages. Once I'm in, I wanna define, is it just dev test production like I have here? Or can, do I wanna have a stage name? Do I wanna have something like that goes like after production? Maybe this is production. You know, I, I could kind of set this up however I want. Now, in this case, I like the classic way of defining things, but what this allows me to do in each stage is really define uh, environmental settings, like in you know data gateway connections or uh, parameters, all depending upon how you want that you know set up. Okay. Now. What we're we're next going to do is we're going to assign a workspace to each one of them. Oh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, but before I create it, I want to set these workspaces as this cool new feature about making stages public. And you can see it right here, right? I can just go ahead and click on set Publ public and save. Now you've got this easy way for you to share this information out to cross-functional teams. So it makes it really easy to collaborate and understand and uh, you know, like where's your code at? You get clear visibility at each stage, which is truly like a game changer for your governance and collaboration capabilities, All right? Once I have that created, I'm gonna go ahead and click on create and continue now. Uh, once this is all set up, I want to next go in and, uh, you know, make sure that I've got each of my works or each of my stages set to a workspace. So in this case, I've got some workspaces set up. I've got my deployment pipelines dev. I'm going to assign this to my de deployment pipelines test. And I'm going to assign this to my deployment pipelines production. Okay. So I'm going to check each one of these. And we're going to see that it's going to do an evaluation of t like where we're at in our deployments. So this is my dev is my base place where I'm I've got content. Uh, I'm in my dev environment, and you can kind of see down here. I've got my adventure works, lake houses, and, and my notebooks that I manage there. When I click on my test, you can see down here that it shows that there's nothing from development that's stage to you know or the, nothing in this stage. It's all coming from the source. There's two items that we're gonna be adding and one which is that lake house with the semantic model or def and, and SQL endpoint, as well as the notebook that's gonna be migrated, okay? And now production looks the same as test because there's nothing there, okay? Now, what I can do is I can go to test and I have the option of just selecting 
uh, I, uh, you know, the lake house itself, what I'm going to do. Um, and that's, it's that type of granular control that really helps you manage your environment. So I can just choose what moves forward, what doesn't. So as I get code that's in place, I, I can make it really easy of, you know, to decide what's going to go through. In this case, I'm going to push everything that's in my development over into production by selecting all of these items and go ahead and click on deploy. When I click on deploy, uh, this little window pops up that allows me to clearly see what is it I'm deploying from one environment to the other, and I can add in a note. This is my first push from dev to test. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use that again in just a second. And uh, I'm going to say, yeah, continue deployments in case one or more items fail. I'm going to say, yes, go ahead and deploy. Now, I could set at this point in time um, some parameters so I could switch these things up. I'm not doing that. I'm not going into that. I just want to show you how this is going to work, okay? Now, you can see here that everything is starting to deploy. The, the copy is occurring. We're seeing errors start to like pop up, but then immediately go away as the, the items start to, to get deployed uh, into that environment, okay? I'm gonna see all these items start to finish up here. Now, the nice thing uh, that happens as this goes on, it's really easy to monitor. I mean, you can see already, hey, here's everything that's in my test development environment. Now, here's everything that's in my test environment. So I've got all my items available. This is starting to run through. Now, um, one thing I do have to make sure once this gets done is that I, I do actually run my uh, AdventureWorks notebook, right? So that, you know, that, that is up and running and in place. Uh, I think that actually might end up happening as part of that deployment, but we got to check that out. So it's copying all the content over. Come on now. As soon as all that content is over and verified, I'm going to be going into my production and checking that out. Now, a cool thing that we also get here is we've got this nice deployment history button in the upper corner here that I can click on to check out that deployment history. Now, oh, look at this. Here is my first, first item that's out there. So I've got my item that's available. It said... Uh, it's my test deployment. It's got the date and time that I did the deployment. It's got who deployed it. Uh, I can actually even go in and when I click on that new items, I can see what items were deployed. Let's zoom in so you can see that. Good, good, good. Um, I can click on the note. I can click on the ID. This ID can be useful if you're like trying to track down errors and logs and log analytics and all that stuff. So that's really nice. And then I can check on the overall status of that deployment. Okay. Now I think that it's not truly still running. I think it's, oh no, it is still done. It's this, ah, look at that. Successful deployment. It did successfully deploy. Now I have the option of deploying everything into my production environment. And I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. Okay. Now we're going to see these things start to finish up. Now, the nice thing here is it makes it really easy to see where you have bottlenecks or issues. Oh, look how quick that was successfully deployed to production. Holy cow. Look at that deployment history. Oh, look at that. I forgot to put in a deployment note. Oh, well, that's okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> so there you have it with just one click I've deployed from my dev to test to production, super easy. These updated deployment pipelines in Microsoft Fabric offer a more structured, scalable, and team-friendly approach to managing your analytics lifecycle. Whether you're in data engineering, just BI development, or managing data flows, these pipelines are a game changer. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. You <laughs> And as always, let me know in the comments how you're using the pipelines or if you've run any, into any cool tips or tricks that I didn't cover. Stay powerful, data gods. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.